Hey there, you. Yes, I mean you. Have you just finished watching an episode of your favorite television program, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Are you looking for a podcast to enhance your viewing experience? Well, look no further. Welcome to Perfectly Marvelous. Join our hosts, Erica, Kara, and Jade, as they provide you with hours of witty banter, behind-the-scenes fun facts, and oh, so much more. Now sit back. Relax and get ready for a perfectly marvelous time. Good evening, folks. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Jade. I'm Kara. And I'm Erica. And this is Perfectly Marvelous, a podcast dedicated to the incredible Amazon Prime show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Today we are covering Season 5, Episode 5, The Pirate Queen. Written by Amy Sherman Palladino and Isaac Oliver and directed by Scott Ellis. Woo! Okay, so guys, before we get into it, listeners, first of all, thank you. Thank you ever so much from the bottom of our marvelous little hearts because you responded to our plea for the downloads and the subscriptions. I did not expect it to be so overwhelmingly beautiful. I mean, wow. I would love it to continue if we're going to keep covering every episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel this season. Keep the downloads coming. Keep those subscriptions coming. We're loving it. This is this is just great. You like me. You really like me. I feel like Sally Field. <laughs> and uh, so second thing, we, the three of us, are really having a blast over here together podcasting, and we want to keep it going. And so we're already thinking about the next show that we can maybe cover together after Mrs. Maisel. And Erica had this beautiful suggestion of only murders in the building. And I'm like, a yes. hell yes. Yeah. So if this is something that you guys would all want, I would love for you to let us know. And if there's another show that you want to suggest, suggestions completely welcome. I had the suggestion of maybe Minx because it's uh, been picked up, I think, by Stars now. It was on HBO and now Stars. But I think Only Murders in the Building is kind of a perfect little spot for the three of us it has i mean it, it, i love the show so much this is not an only murders in the building podcast yet so i won't go too <laughs> much into it but i just want to say uh here, here at the top that yeah listeners if that's something you want let us know and if you have other suggestions let us know all right so without further ado let's start the show ladies all right here we go tits up it's up. I have this perfectly marvelous girl in my perfectly beautiful room, and we're living together and having a marvelous time. Awesome. Let us begin, as always, our discussion with our most marvelous moment of the episode. Dawes. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Kara, we're going to start with you. So I have a really hard time picking one in this episode i'm gonna say that every time because it's true. i know it's true <laughs> same. i see but. i had the feeling that maybe we were all gonna have the same one i i could see that yep <laughs> i don't know we should probably throw a wager in there let's see yeah let's see <laughs> i don't know like it just i'm almost always gonna go with the one that makes me laugh the most and in this case, I ended up finally going with Ava and Rose anxiously following Zelda around the apartment, learning how to <laughs> clean and figuring out how a vacuum works, especially <laughs> Abe's confusion over what to do with the bag and asking if he just throws the whole vacuum away every time. <laughs> so what do we do when it's full? Do we yeah. get a new one? You, em- <laughs> you empty it, Mr. Weissman. I couldn't handle that. Like that was that was golden. Zelda and was he wanted- really frustrated with them. Oh yeah, because <laughs> oh, it's yeah. her. It's her reception, and this is how she has to spend her reception in her cotton candy heirloom of a dress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, that was fun. That was a great when, moment. When Abe, Abe was just concerned with the exact mechanicals of the suction function, he's like, can you explain? And Zelda's like, no. 
<laughs> no, I can. <laughs> Love yeah, it. That was good. The va- the vacuuming lesson. Yeah, that really tickled me. For sure. All right. Nice. Erica, what was yours? Okay. So I went with a different moment. And it was when Susie's reaction, her face, when she realized that James got the role. And then it transitioned into that telephone scene where you see yes. all those men talking about how cutthroat Susie is and like coming up with all these different scenarios about how she was able to get like, you know, oh, yeah. David Weston mm-hmm. and how she's just finally getting respect from her, her peers. And then the end when she was getting fitted for her suit, I was just like, oh, yes, yeah. Susie. Yes. It was, it was like, this was a good Susie episode to see her like work hard and like really yeah. get in the end. I, I just really loved it. She's yeah. finally getting rewarded. Mm-hmm. And after, after what happened to Susie, our Susie, on the last yeah. episode, I, I was I was so overjoyed with everything we got from Susie this episode. She is such a fucking survivor. We'll get into it. I don't want to go too much into it right now. But <laughs> yeah, th- after, after last episode, I was delighted by this. This was yes. fan service in the best way. This is exactly what I wanted for my Susie. Yeah, I'll accept it. It's fine. What? The fan service. Sometimes oh, yeah. that irritates me, but in this oh, right, instance, right. I was just like, give me more. Like yes. this is this is make perfect. Susie give Susie all the fucking success. Give it mm-hmm. to her. Mm-hmm. And and you know, and not just because the 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 way the reason I think that it goes, it's not just like, okay, we're doing this just to make everybody happy, because it felt so earned. Susie mm-hmm. she's such Absolutely. a Absolutely. She and works it's not, hard. And, and she didn't get it smart. right away. She it this right. has been Like, she's just slowly starting to get this notoriety, and she's slowly, like, becoming, like, a desirable, like, uh, management firm to be with. Like, you know, yeah, she's doing amazing. Yep. Okay, so my most marvelous moment, I was going to try to quote, but I can't do it justice because... Uh, Matilda Zidigis, I really hope I'm saying her last name correctly, mm. as Zelda, n- <laughs> none, no one can deliver these lines like she can. So my most marvelous moment, which I was sure was going to be everybody's, um, <laughs> but I guess the cheese stands alone, which is fine. I have um, an idea. Oh, I know yeah, what it is. <laughs> yeah. You guys, those vows. Um, I know. <laughs> I squealed. I shrieked. I had the biggest smile on my face. My heart was jumping out of my chest when Zelda and Janusz were exchanging their vows. It was so, it was just so precious. I it, was, like, it was so beautiful. And I agree with Whole you. Time. I, I think I would have, but I knew I needed to come up with something else. So it's just as amazing, but you're right. Yep. And Moish. Oh, oh my I know, gosh. I know. And Moish just, okay, wait. So I'm going to play. Yep. I have the recording. I'm going to play it. Janusz. I love you. I love everything about you. I love that you are on time. I love that you hang pictures straight and always without measuring, perfectly centered. (laughs) I love that you don't lose money. I love that you never stain a wooden spoon. That's important. I love that you lift with your legs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I love that I am your wife. Now, Janusz, man has been a life of hardship. Cold winters, many nights, no sleep. My family lived day to day. But I was given the tools. I could fix what was broken. But that was to be my life. I thought. And then I made you, Zelda. I did not know I was broken until you were the one to have fixed me. Oh, Jesus. Moish, I think you can provide me. And then Moish just loses it. That's so sweet. Oh my God, it was just so sweet. Oh, I loved it. Adorable, cute, honest vows. I think I was just like grinning the entire time. I, I, yeah, I was just squealing. I was just, (laughs) (laughs) so I don't know that there will ever be a moment to top that as far as my just making my heart like so just overjoyed with happiness. Yeah, that was, it was really pretty great. I love Zelda. I, I think that we could all do with more Zelda in every episode. So I'm really excited to see that she got, you know, a, a moment, more than just mm-hmm. a moment. I that agree. Was so, yeah. 
It was great. And yeah, we'll get to that wedding dress. We'll talk about it all. So, all right, yes. let's uh, start it off with our discussion of the whole episode. So jumping in, the first moment we get this flash forward with Midge and Joel. It's 1987. Joel's in prison. Wow. Yes. Erica, take it away. Break it yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me start this off. I actually really enjoyed this flash forward. because Yes, it, it was my favorite it, so far. Well, because also it was very well done. Yeah, it was well done. They aged up very well. It was finally talking about the spoiler that they they dropped a, a while ago, which really annoyed me in that interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what I wanted to just say about this is that, like, you know, we get we get this flash forward. It's 1987. We're obviously in a prison, and we have Midge and Joel. Midge looks beautiful, and uh, Joel looks pretty good with his full head of hair. <laughs> I was going to say, this is what I was going to say. I was like, Joel looks a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's that, even, that, well, prison weathers you a little bit, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, I guess. And like, he's a man, you know, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always a little like irked by old age makeup. It, it yeah. kind of bothers me uh, in a lot of shows. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's well, hard to do really well. Yeah. You know who loves it? Mike Flanagan. It's in like it's such oh a huge gosh. part of every one yeah. of Mike Flanagan shows. And I always get a little because sometimes it like spoils things too when you can clearly tell that an actor mm -hmm. is in old age makeup and you're not supposed yeah. to know it yet. But whatever. It doesn't hurt this show in by in any way. It just is I it just kind of makes me chuckle. You know, it's a little silly. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't look too bad. Like I think yeah. Rachel uh Brazahan looked pretty much like herself but she definitely had more of like a, yeah like her hair was definitely more 80s style and mm -hmm. you know she's starting to kind of like her voice is deepening but also like even her cadence has slowed down a little bit i noticed mm -hmm. yeah. um but I, I did enjoy this little banter back and forth between uh joel and midge and um a couple things that i noticed was like she's traded in her pyrex for her topperware yeah, was, like, was it was it a brisket? I couldn't. It tell. was a brisket. That, yeah. It, yep. It was a brisket. That eighties yeah. Tupperware. Yep. Yes. And um, just a little tidbit. I noticed that Tupperware actually has a whole like page yes. dedicated to Mrs. <gasps> Maisel. So oh, they no. have yeah. Yes, Tupperware they have their, came out with a a little line with for a, Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all these groovy colors like that Midge has, those pa those pastel-y pinks and greens, and yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I'm going to Google this on my phone right now. You so need I don't to. Forget. You do. <laughs> yeah. You do need to do yeah. that. Um, just a couple of things I was thinking about, like we were getting a little bit of answers. Um, they mm -hmm. did not really get into too much of how, like, what I really wish they did is they told us how long he was there, but I guess that's going to come up at some point. Um, mm -hmm. We had a mention of Imogene. Um, when they were uh, yeah, talking yay! about how, you know, she produced those headshots. Um, and also, uh, the, they brought up that now they're grandparents, Aww. little Rose um, on the kibbutz. And that was sweet. Th the saddest thing, I guess, I, I think we have to do some math, is when now we have confirmed that Rose is rolling over in her grave. So we know that yeah. she's passed away at this point. And that he's getting out within four to six months if he's with good behavior. But yeah. um, the one thing I, I there was a couple of things that I, I noticed, and I think they did a really good job of kind of developing this part of their relationship that Joel cares about Midge. He wants to protect her. He cares about her career. Um, I think he does respect her as being able to take care of herself. But mm. he does do something pretty drastic and ends up in prison. And I feel like it has to do with her in some way. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I, yeah, he says, I'm always looking out for you. And she's like, and look where it got you. Yeah. 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 And I went, I went, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Midge, what'd you do? Yeah. That Joel took the ball for. And like, it just further. Okay, continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely. And then the whole thing about her, how she's selling wigs now. And, um, you know, like a lot of actors and performers like kind of go towards this like entrepreneurship, like where they, they do lines. And, and oh, I, yeah, it's the thing. It's now. just a thing to do. Like Raquel Welch did a lot of wigs. And, and then I was thinking about um, Joan Rivers, who we know is a inspiration to this, where she did like QVC and mm -hmm. did jewelry. Yeah. And I think, oh, yeah, I know she did. I think she I feel like she did Avon, too. I could be wrong. 
So I, I was just really, I felt this flash forward was dealt differently than the others. It wasn't as um, depressing. It felt like it still carried that tone and that, and that lighthearted like uh, character of the um, of Midge and Joel when they were younger. You know, there was a lot of that banter going back and forth, and you know, talking about the headshots and the um, the throwback to the um, the USO show with a panty shot because, like, hey, we oh, never yeah. got we never got to see <laughs> that photo, and it exists apparently. So the panty pose, yeah. So no, we I, saw the photo. We saw the panty we? pose photo. Oh my god, yeah, I have printed. to go back. Remember, it was printed on the guy. It was hanging in the guy's locker because it was printed in the oh, newspaper. Yeah. But it was also used on the poster. Remember, um, Shy's manager. Uh, oh, I have to go name? back. <laughs> he he was like, "What? It's the you guys didn't. It was it was because Susie didn't have money to print Midge's headshots, and so he had That's to use right. like the only picture that they had, oh my and it gosh. was it oh was my the God. panty pose. What was yeah. that? That was that. Was that season four? No, season that was three. Season, that was season three, the shy, yeah. the shy Baldwin. And season. you know what? When we were doing our rewatch, that was the one that I skipped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed the whole flash forward. I thought we got a lot of information and throwbacks, but also if we don't get to see Imogene again, at least we know she still exists in this world. Um, I yeah, I was surprised. Again. I was surprised that they brought her up because it's it's always on my mind whenever Archie is around, and they're mm -hmm. they're using Archie quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just feel like it's it's it only just further emphasizes the fact that 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 she's uh, not around. Right. Yeah, Bailey <laughs> Bailey De Young is not here, and yeah. I meant I meant to stalk her on social media, and I will do that because I have a feeling that she might have. <laughs> I'm sure that people are asking her on Instagram, where are you, Bailey? Like, why aren't you on the show? I'm sure that it's a scheduling thing. And it probably means that she's got, you know, other jobs that are better for her, which go you. I, yeah. I'm very happy for because she is a great actor. I, I hope that she gets more roles because she's hilariously funny. I really loved her in Bunheads. Oh, yeah. And then when I saw she was in, you know, Mrs. Maisel, I got really excited. So, so did you have, did you guys have any like favorite lines from that? There were a well, couple of things that I thought were noteworthy, at least. Yeah. My favorite line of, like, as an English nerd was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously Joel sit making the reference to Richard III yeah, saying my that. kingdom for a fist fight. I was yes. just like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy right now. But also <laughs> that line combined with his, you know, kind of throwaway line of the only battles in here or over section, sections of the Financial Times yeah. tell us that he's at a pretty low security facility, yes. most likely mm. with other white collar criminals or at least crimes that have more to do with money and property as opposed mm -hmm. to violence. So I'm still thinking this could possibly be related to uh, Frank and Nikki and then Susie's involvement with mm -hmm. the mob and getting Midge involved with the mob. So I'm yeah. still I mean, holding out hope that that's what I, is happening. Yeah, I, I think it's got to be, right? Because there, we're getting, okay, it, it, it's a little, <laughs> I'm like, I get it, guys. I get it's it. Like it's like an, an anvil-sized hint every yes. time. <laughs> every time. Joel's like, I don't like this for you, Midge. I yes, don't like yeah. this. I don't like this. I don't like it. Those two guys, yeah, I don't like them. I'm like, wait, Joel. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Are you telling me, do you like them? Are, are you telling me <laughs> yeah. that you don't like the whole Frank and Nikki thing? Is that what you're saying? Because it's yeah. just not coming. It's not clear quite yet, you know? <laughs> In any other show, I might think it was like a giant red herring and they're trying to throw us off, but I'm you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's exactly what we're thinking it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I would say so. I, I have, um, with the whole Joel thing, I feel like they're, the storytelling with his character is a, like, a little clunky this season. I could see that. It, this, there's just no subtlety, <laughs> like even no. in the slightest. We're not getting a whole lot of Joel. So um, his character is like... His, I, the points that they're trying to make with his character are just like, kind of one note, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, I was thinking about Joel, and you're right. I mean, since May is no longer in the picture, it's like he's no longer pursuing love. He's, you know, we could see he's, you know, and we'll see that once we get into the next scenes. But, like, it's now just all focused about Midge. And that's like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and it might be a plot, like, device to just kind of show how he's going to help her with something. But I guess... 
that also is probably helping the likability factor for him mm-hmm, in a way, right. you know, because mm-hmm, we, we've talked about that. Like he's, it's like, oh, he is, he's for yep. her dream, her career, what she needs and her wants. So, yep. Yeah. And, and we'll get there with, with how I feel about what they're, what they're saying with Joel there. I have, I have a lot of Joel thoughts this, Joel. on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I'm surprised by it. Um, but I will say <laughs> the only other thing that um, we didn't really talk too much about is, yeah, Ethan, I'm pretty sure this this granddaughter, right. Rose, is Ethan and Hava's. Yeah, because of the and, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the last time we saw Ethan in the flash forwards was 1981, I think. Mm-hmm. And so now that this is right. 1987. So they have a six-year-old probably ish five six years old Mm -hmm. granddaughter so yeah just interesting stuff happening with with ethan there and yeah yeah, when i was thinking i'm like okay whose baby is it i'm like well it's definitely not esther's (laughs) so i'm just just based on what we've gotten from her it doesn't seem like she would Mm -hmm. have a baby yeah didn't get that vibe no definitely not all right so moving on to the next scene with joel and archie at the church so this was one on my first watch I did not catch that they were at Archie's like childhood Catholic school mm-hmm. St. Xavier's Catholic school for boys that just went right over my head first watch and I guess they're in the chapel or the oratory of the school and you see like I think there's one school kid that like rushes by them at one point in time <laughs> yeah, yeah but they are there kind of scoping out a new venue to open up a new club. And this, I wasn't sure if they were looking for, you know, a new place to open up an additional club because this one's so successful, or if Joel is trying to possibly get away from his would have been in-laws. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Right. I wasn't sure if this was, because they said they're going to transform it into a supper club um, Mm -hmm. with a, you know, they like this because there's a parking lot. People can drive in from Jersey and, you know, places around New York. Any place where there's parking is like, yes. It's it's gold. Yeah. It's already established parking. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, great acoustics. Great acoustics. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Churches. And I guess that this was a thing, or I mean, I, I guess it is a thing. Like, transforming churches and stuff into restaurants and I was kind of surprised by the time yeah. frame because I feel like that's more common now but then again I don't I'm thinking yeah. that they're not like I don't know they're not selling the actual church property I think it's just maybe the school itself because that to me yeah. it just seemed right. like a little like I don't feel like they did that back then but then again I no. don't, yeah selling the school that just so happens to have you know like a chapel or something yeah inside of it seems a little bit more acceptable but i guess there's only so much real estate in new york so yeah doesn't surprise me but i will say like this scene just made me miss imogene even more Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every time we see archie i'm just like okay but where's your wife um i do really enjoy the kind of juxtaposition and the way that he and Joel's personalities play off of each other Mm because Archie has some good almost like pearl clutching moments to contrast (laughs) some of Joel's more you know bold or a little outrageous behavior and we've already seen that in the first few episodes but throw in some nuns and it's even better the (laughs) whole exchange (laughs) about you know, with the Reverend Mother and then later on flirting with the other I can't remember what Clementine. Her name was. There you go. Clementine. That's right. That's the name of my leopard gecko. I should have remembered her name. <laughs> but <laughs> I love the that. young nun. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah. we do learn in this scene that it's been a few weeks or a couple months since the mm-hmm. industrial garbage show. And obviously, this is something that Joel has been talking about nonstop because Archie makes a comment that he's been talking about it constantly, how he's concerned about Frank and Nikki. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they're having this conversation right after the flash forward of Joel in prison talking about, you know, essentially being in prison because of what he did to protect Midge. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... I did, gosh, the whole exchange, I just keep looking at my notes and all it says is I love Joel flirting with this nun in all yes. 
<laughs> but he's right. She was totally flirting with him. And the kind of subtle reaction of Archie in the background when she's offering, you know, do you like honey in your tea? And Joel's like, yeah. however you like to make it is how I like to take it. And Archie <laughs> just like looks up at the ceiling. is like, oh, my God. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that just that whole thing was poor brilliant. Archie. Archie's so traumatized by his Catholic school years. I know. <laughs> and and honestly, I have to say, Joel Johnston, who plays Archie, is I think it's funny that his name in real life is Joel. Is Joel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of another one of those things with like Alfie Fuller with the whole Susie story. You know, she's always involved in Susie. And so Susie's representing a guy in the show named Alfie, and then in real life, Dinah's name is Alfie which oh, I yeah. love that name on a girl. But anyway, so yeah, Joel Johnson, this is my favorite moments. This is my favorite Archie moment, favorite Archie scene that we've gotten. Because I haven't always like loved Archie. I kind of gloss over him and like don't really pay him much mind. There was one mm-hmm. scene in, I think it was season two or three, where him and Joel are hitting baseballs together. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they're drinking beer. And he just, and, and that scene annoyed the crap out of me because he just keeps going three kids three kids three you should have hit himself kids. in the balls it was like <laughs> grating on my eardrums i don't yeah i i just every time i watched that scene i was like oh god i hate the way that he's yelling this three kids i'm like stop please stop it i don't know why <laughs> sometimes sometimes noises like a people's voices just get to me and that really annoyed me but anyway um this was very funny these were some great this is archie gold this poor guy has major catholic scars and i had a couple of um favorite lines (laughs) the rulers were always new where do the old ones go (laughs) and joel's like talking about how beautiful it is look at the ceiling that's what the reverend mother said whenever she smacked me it's great. It's a great ceiling. <laughs> you know, I had oh, Jesus. a Jesus. I, I had a friend who was in Catholic school and she would tell me the horror stories and like I guess yeah. this is in like the late eighties and she's like, Yeah, I was, and she was so bad she got kicked out, which was kind of funny, but she's like, Yeah, they used to like lock me up in the closet where all the kids would put their lunch yeah. boxes and she would steal their lunches. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, Well, at least you like got something out of that. That's true. But, yeah, it's like, like what do you oh. expect putting me in here with all this food? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the moment where he, um, are you going to have a nervous breakdown every time we come in here? No, I won't. And he turns to the altar boy, run. <laughs> <laughs> He's having some internal flashbacks for sure. Why oh, triggered? Poor Archie. In that closet. Poor Archie. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I wonder was if funny. this could still fit in here. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I, I this scene totally... It, I guess you could say that it could be cut, but I was glad it wasn't cut because it did really tickle me and it made me laugh. And I, yeah, I just love this, this for, for Archie, for Joel Johnston. I'm glad that he got this moment. It was good for him. He's having a good season. That's for Yeah, sure. he is. Yeah. I, I, but again, the whole every time we see Archie, I'm like, where's Imogene? And then the mention of Imogene just further emphasizes the fact that there is no Imogene. And I'm like, stop drawing attention to it. You know, it's mm-hmm. sad. But anyway. All right, so now we get into Susie's office. So she's got a lot of clients and good, great stuff is happening for Susie. So I do want to say at the top here, before we get into the scene, there's an elephant in the room, all right? The or consequence. A llama? Oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's an elephant and a llama. So uh, the the consequence <laughs> elephant, uh, where are the repercussions? Where is oh, the... Oh, yeah. For Midge's wrongdoing to Susie in that show, I guess we're just not going to talk about it. I guess Susie was just fine with it. I guess... Two months Frank of and healing. Nikki, I don't know. I, I was You know what bummed. that reminded me of? Because I was looking for the same thing. I was like, are we not... Is there nothing? Just, is she not like pissed at her or like anything? Is when Midge, was it season four when she had that whole like Jackie Kennedy moment where she made Jackie yes! Kennedy cry and then we oh never God, heard about you. it again? Anyway, yeah. I don't, that's a whole other tangent, but Midge yeah. doesn't seem to face consequences nope. that frequently. No, no. Nope. Nope. Yeah, it's a little bit of a Paladino thing. It might be a flaw, a writing flaw, or yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've heard this complained about on other things like Gilmore Girls and stuff, but um, yeah. I just think that it's kind of weird how they introduce things and then kind of drop them. Yep. 
And there's yeah. so much to tie up in this fifth season, right? There, we cannot address everything. So we're kind of in this season five, we're kind of getting like a greatest hits moment where we're including some things that maybe could be cut and sacrificing other things. So instead of consequence scene for Midge, we get like a greatest hits album of like Joel and Archie, like one more one more time for the cheap seats yeah. in the back, you know, like mm -hmm. before we have to say goodbye to this bromance that I do kind of love. Um, we get that, you know, one more scenes mm -hmm. with them, which I'm not mad at, you know, but no. other things like the whole Tess thing, they introduce the fact that like Tess's husband is dead. I, I would just love to know more about Tess's whole um, life. The insurance fraud. Yeah. The insurance We're fraud. Yeah. Well, yeah. talking about that again that's yeah. over because she slept with Maybe. the uh, the insurance right agent. yeah yeah Ugh. i guess that's i true. guess yeah but, but i, I just want to know like how did skint die did she kill him probably i don't know it's <laughs> i just want to know more but i did also think i had that same thought you had jade about you know are we are there no consequences are we just not mm -hmm. going to talk about this but then i started to think it might be very very intentional that Susie did not let her know that this was as big a right. deal as we all know it is. Right. And we'll that get there. That makes sense. That makes sure. sense. Yeah. I mean, and I know you're going to get to it, but their the relationship has not been the same this season. Like they're mm -hmm. a little more distant. And even here, she's just kind of like, you have a day job. Get out of my office, basically. Oh, so, yeah. It's one of my least, true. if I had to have a least favorite thing about this season, it would be like the lack of Susie and Midge closeness. Yeah, you know, I'm missing it. I'm and mm -hmm. and it's all in the back of our minds. Everyone is this impending fight that they're going to get into. Maybe you know it's going to. I guess the seeds are being planted now. Um, Susie's getting busy. She's got an office full of people. You mm -hmm. know, Alfie is performing at the Orpheum Theater in Los Angeles. Um, not too you know, shabby. Not yep. too shabby. Uh, yeah, he's got this llama <laughs> looking at I a two thousand dollar room service bill. I know you don't eat, so I'm guessing this is Catherine. <laughs> and I keep telling her that the dinner salad is entree size, but she just won't listen. <laughs> like that's the the one line she's feeling judged. <laughs> just like love and the it. llama, the llama face with so her cute good. little scruffy her little yeah. hair. She and was her, oh. precious. She was so precious. I know, Kara, like, I thought of you. I was like, Kara is smiling so big at this llama right I was, now. I know. Like, this is the type of Amy Sherman Palladino camp that I am wholeheartedly behind. And I know oh, it yeah. drives some people crazy, but right. it just, yeah, it, it that was almost my marvelous moment. But I was just like, I can't pick a llama. llama. Yes, yeah. you can. You can pick a llama. I know. You, can you can pick can. a llama. <laughs> Two Anytime. episodes in a row with an animal that's extremely cute is quite wonderful. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. true. Like Cooper, Cooper is and now pretty great. Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who's next yeah. next episode? We gotta have another one. There better I'm be. Hoping. Yeah. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people may say that this was, you know, a little a little too much, a little too camp, but I think necessary. Necessary mm -hmm. llama. Necessary. Uh yes. And another thing that I want to call out about this scene is the camera work. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So the the way that it just smoothly zooms around the office is so cool. Starting with at the top of the scene, it starts with Maggie in her office, and then it like pulls back really quickly across to the other side of the of the other building. You know, mm -hmm. through you know how they have that um that uh, clothes hanging line. You know that mm -hmm. they can pa you know pass the phone back and forth. It's just so cool. It's like glides back in like a whoosh. Like the camera was just dancing around this yeah. office. It was so cool. And I got to call out Julie Klausner as Maggie. Oh, she's hilarious. She's I think that's me. I think she's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally laughed at that stiff joke. <laughs> yeah, right? I wish that we got more of her. I know that like we can't have more of everybody, but no. she's underutilized i feel you know and uh she she's an amazing actor and writer in real life julie klausner she has a great podcast as well called how was your week and she huh. created the hulu series difficult people wow. um, produced by amy poehler i yeah. didn't know that that's awesome yeah she julie klausner is she's an awesome lady so check her out if you haven't especially her podcast just her podcast is great and yeah and we got to see more of alfie fuller i'm loving that dinah is getting her time to shine mm -hmm. because she's a great actor 
just her little voice, her little high pitched voice. There's a great interview too that I'll talk about later in the news with Alfie Fuller. And she's just such a cute person in real life. She's so precious. I loved listening to her talk about how much she loved being on the show. Um, And it's funny. I just want to say, like, I had no idea why I felt so energized by that scene at first. Like, but hearing you talk about the camera work, I was like, that makes so much sense because you feel it. Like, the camera is one of the main things directing you how to feel. And on top of that, obviously, the chemistry of especially those three women is fantastic. But I'm glad you're here to point things like that out, Jay. Yeah. (laughs) Because I didn't even think about that. I was like, oh, that does help. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't write dynamic. too many notes, but I wrote, I love the chaos. Like it's, it was, yes. yep. you're right. It was, the energy was just like coming out of the TV screen. It's so good. It's yeah, I think like that feeling of like, you know, whenever they have like big Wall Street scenes and you're seeing mm-hmm. like this trade floor and everybody moving about, I was like, that's how it felt. Yes, it is top notch camera work happening here. The cinematographer, David Muller, Mueller. I forget how to pronounce his last name. There's some, we talked about on the last podcast interviews Mm -hmm. with him, the way that he talks about the things that, the things that you're not supposed to notice because it's supposed to feel seamless and just give you a sense of, it's just supposed to, like you said, give you the energy. And Mm -hmm. I just couldn't help but notice it. There's a couple of awesome camera uh, moments in this episode. It was great. Um, So yeah, uh, back to the scene, Maggie and Dinah. Have their work cut out for them. Lots of hopeful performers trying to be seen by Susie. James wants to be an actor. He wants to go to Hollywood mm-hmm. and be in this film. And yeah, Dinah is, she, Susie's repping so many clients now. She's like organizing the gigs on this huge board. And I'm just so <laughs> proud of Susie. Mm-hmm. You know, like we said, yeah. after last week, yep. this is exactly what I want to see with her. It made me so happy. And Susie is really getting to be somebody, you know, and mm-hmm. she's coming into her own. She's She's got this confidence I love her cool, just in charge energy, telling people, you stay, you go, you stay, you go. Mm-hmm, and when mm-hmm. she when she walks, she like walks down the hallway and the camera's right in front of her face. And she's like got this cute little strut where she, you yeah. know, her shoulders, yeah. her shoulders are really going like duh, 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 and she clicks down the hallway oh, yeah. uh, with this little pep in her step. And I loved it. And uh <laughs> yeah, she's such a badass. She just hangs up on Helen Dreyer, played by the amazing, fabulous Deborah Monk who I'm shocked that they got to do this role for like two seconds. She's like, nope, goodbye. It's not your call. It's this other guy, David Weston. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> nope, <laughs> moving on. I'm very good. Got... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Susie's a good-ass manager. You know, she's really got it going on. She mm-hmm. knows what she's doing, and I love it. It but feels I like I love this it. is what <laughs> she was made to do. Yeah, like she very is natural. Finally getting to do what she was made to do. And I, you know, I'm glad they told us that it's been a couple months or a few weeks because, you know, we didn't need to see all of this happening for Susie. Like, I completely agree. Like, I can, I'm on board with the fact that, like, Midge has had success, Alfie's had having success, and people are starting to hear about her. Mm -hmm. It's not surprising that people are starting to show up and want her to represent them, and it makes me so happy. Did you guys catch the the set design too? All the posters on the walls of, yes. of James and Alfie and that was the, the, ma- the magic show posters mm-hmm. and Midge's headshots are everywhere. It's just I love the chaos of this office. It's yes, so great. Mm-hmm. yeah, she's a busy lady. She's a busy lady, and mm-hmm. uh, Midge is a busy lady. She's oh, in this scene falling asleep, stand, sitting, standing up, sitting down. She's like, "What time is it? What day is it? Where am I? <laughs> what what's my name?" And this was me many days this week. I had a very busy week and sleep was just not to be had. And I I attempted to watch this episode when I was um, in the the kind of state of falling asleep while eating a sandwich. I was like, (laughs) I was like taking a bite of my vegetable sub and (laughs) like my eyes were glazing and feeling very heavy. And I was like literally falling asleep with food in my mouth. It was that. And I tried to watch this episode and guys... There, I feel like okay. It's a it's a Paladino thing. People talk fast, right? In these shows, when I first tried to watch this episode, when I was really tired, I couldn't process. I was like, "Are they speaking sentences?" It, it to me was just same. Like, <laughs> Subtitles are my the, friends. That oh, was yeah. the speed at which I couldn't. My brain was too. Yeah, slow you to live take in it New in. York, and I'm from Philly, and we talk fast naturally. <laughs> yeah. 
We do. Yeah, I'm a fast talker. Kept down here in Texas, <laughs> especially in West Texas, everybody talks so slow. But I, I watched this while tired, and I missed so many things. The so, first yeah, I had to watch this one three times, and Ugh. every time I picked up on more lines because they were talking. I think so even fast. faster than normal in this episode. There was so much packed in here mm-hmm. and some really funny stuff, but it got past me when I was too tired. I was like, I can't watch this right now. Um, For sure. One thing that I did really love was, well, two things actually. Midge is wearing an amazing hat. Her costumes, I couldn't, I couldn't comment on every single one, but I really love mm-hmm. this pink hat in this scene uh, in the office. And... Did you guys clock the pigeon house in Susie's office? Oh, I sure office? did. The, I she got that it. birdhouse. But I miss the actual pigeons. I kind of miss that. Wait, I guess there were pigeons? Like, have you in not seen? Scene? No, no, not in no, the scene. No, she did. Okay. She, she built it. I was just like, wait a second. She, she installed it last, it last episode, week. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she built this little pigeon birdhouse, and it's now sitting in her window. But now we don't get to see the, the pigeons anymore. And I'm sure that they're saving money on bird wranglers Training. and whatever that they yeah. yeah that they need to have and <laughs> but i did love the the little detail of the pigeon birdhouse so I was anyway gonna say how did i miss an animal in this episode <laughs> yeah, you next week <laughs> there was be, a lack of animal there'll be a uh, a pigeon named carl same with the <gasps> c names <laughs> <laughs> i like it so yes anything more about this scene we we're just now we're looking for producer david weston mm-hmm. on the these hunt. are Yes, on the hunt. All right, so next scene, Midge and the writers, uh, then Midge and Gordon's office, and mm-hmm. then there's a scene with Midge and George. So we're going to kind of talk about all these scenes together. So we start off with, what one thing I noticed, and I don't want to go like, oh, this happened, this happened, but what I'm noticing is that there's some type of friendship building within the writer's room. They're starting to really love Midge and stand up for Midge and talk to her and treat her like one of the just... I don't want to say one of the guys, but she's just, she's an equal oh, no. at this point. You yeah, know, they she, totally are. Yeah, she, they don't, you know, and I mean, I think the only time, like, she didn't feel like she was like everybody else is when she was talking about the diddy do in Gordon's office for a second. But oh, I, yeah. I loved um, when, um, and I forget the the characters, when he came in with the two science projects. And I guess what he's doing, he's bringing in a project for Ethan because mom is, so, yes. a, a, just such a great mom that, that she didn't such have a time. Great mom. To do a science project, and she's like, "Well, Jeez. Ethan is. These are like a B plus, you know." She's like, "This that is Ethan so we're talking funny. about." Yeah, here. so he just drops <laughs> the one that he's already dropped the subway. There we go. Oh Perfect. yeah, Sold. the volcano goes yes. crashing to the floor. I don't know what his yeah. name is. I just call him Adam. F- it's Eddie. Finch Eddie K. Thomas. In my head. Yeah, right. Finch yeah. Finch. A very long time ago, and probably not what he would be. Pref- Bird to be remembered. It's what for. we all know. I mean, all, all us '90s kids are like, yeah. it's it's Finch from American Pie. Yeah, Eddie K. Thomas but, plays. Oh, his name I is Adam. Realize it was Finch. Oh, yes. God. Now I have to look at him again. It almost makes it better. <laughs> oh, yeah, but he like I just I don't know. They really are bonding, and mm-hmm. obviously, like we have determined that I am a sucker for the protective vibe when it's not like overwhelming and problematic. And right. when they relate to her that, you know, somebody stole one of her jokes right. and yeah. he just goes, let us punch him in the face. Like, I know. They're protective of her and they yes. clearly like respect her talent, I think, at this point. And that just that made me so happy. She is accepted and one of them. Yeah. I was wondering, too, I'm like, I wonder if they're still keeping score. And I wonder if that was a thing that they started only after Midge started working in the office. Yeah. Because, because it does seem like there is a competition with these guys. If your joke makes it in the show, it means someone else's didn't. So mm-hmm. they're not really a team. They're kind of out for themselves. But now mm-hmm. it seems like they're all a team. So maybe this is something that... Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if this is something that was kind of in place before Midge got there, or if it's something that Midge kind of brought into the into the the energy of the writers' room. This whole team. team How long has she been there now? Would you say three months? Because it's been at least well, no, it's been it's been months since the last episode. We get that. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of how long it's been. I feel like it's probably been about about like five months, six months. Yeah, I assumed. Well. I assume three, three months. I assume three, closer three to, to three. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. because of, you know, it seemed like it was a whirlwind and within the first couple of days mm-hmm. or the first week or two that she was there, 
when she ended up having to do the industrial and wanted to get on the show. And now it's been like, what, at least two months. Right. Yeah. I I would say about like three, three ish, three to four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So we, we, we find out Ruben Salazar is a piece of shit. He stole her garter belt joke. Um, you know, he, they, they said they would punch her and I, one of them said like, do you know how to make a fist? And it was, it was really, a, <laughs> it was a really cute little back and forth. And I appreciated that. Um, when they go into Gordon's office and I was talking to Kara about this earlier, it's just Marge's <laughs> kind of little nuggets about egg, egg, <laughs> egg guy about how, um, how he wars human skin and did stuff with the bones and, Ed Gein. Oh so there are some that was so very funny. very funny lines in this scene that it i did not really catch good. the first time i caught them on the second watch yeah and she was just so serious like she's she's doing it right but it became so funny just the way she delivered it mm-hmm. um just yeah, any golden who plays marge is killing it she's i golden. love marge yeah she's, she's wonderful she's mm-hmm. um so just a few things that were mentioned i wanted to note was um you know, they're they're looking for more material for the monologue. And I just kind of appreciated what Gordon was doing. It sounds like his wife has given him some feedback um, that he's mentioning too much women bashing. And they apparently mm. been picking on Debbie Reynolds a lot. And, <laughs> you know, we're we're trying to figure out, like, well, what about Debbie Reynolds? Like, was this about Eddie Fisher and the affair with Elizabeth Taylor and like all that, that would, kind of stuff? Yeah, that, about that, that is what they're. Yeah, it's about that time frame. Right. So yeah. she stole Elizabeth Taylor's husband. <laughs> Scandal. This would have been a huge thing at, mm-hmm. at, in the. Yeah. In the, and then Elizabeth Taylor stole him and then and Eddie Fisher married her. So it was. like, Yeah. Oof, my Jeez. goodness. Oh, no, yeah, that's what yeah. it was, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor Debbie yep. Reynolds. I know. <laughs> yep. And this is, I, I, I kind of was thinking about this particular scene was where I was focusing in on the relationship between Gordon and George. George seems to be very, like, I don't want to call him old Hollywood, but, like, old network. He has oh, yeah. a lot of respect. He is this old kind of, like, chauvinistic you know, he, he like, you know, gives Midge all these kind of like, oh, look how darling you look type of way. But it, it you could see that when they were having that conversation about the did he do um, product placement and how angry Gordon got. And then um, how he tried to, um, how George tried to take it out on Mike, that there's just this like conflict going on between yeah. George. There's some tension there. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and. I, I tension know, between George and Gordon, um, Gordon, George, right? Gordon, and then obviously Mike wants George to die. We are yes, that. right. We so know the that. whole <laughs> the whole George and Mike they they obviously hate each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, what What are you doing in these meetings? And Mike's like, I'm always in these meetings. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? I've been in these meetings forever. And then with um Gordon, he's like, I could never be mad at you. Why would I ever be mad at you, Your Highness? Mm-hmm. Very, very. It's becoming more obvious though that George kind of secretly low-key like hates gordon i think yeah <laughs> i think that george kind of low-key hates everybody and oh, yeah. we get it we get kind of a lot of reveal about george's true mm-hmm. nature in this episode yeah. he is um, i think he's I kind of we'll a talk about it sorry go on <laughs> no i was just gonna say he's kind of an asshole <laughs> very much oh, yeah. well and uh, yeah. by the end of it i know we'll talk we'll get to it but right. i think Part of that tension that we see with him and Gordon butting heads about, you know, who he wants to bring on the show as a sponsor, potentially as guests eventually, I think Midge starts to signify to him kind of this, you know, new guard, this the new trend that's coming in where, you know, women in comedy and women having more influence and kind of the modernization of this craft. And I think he's starting to freak out a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the he's freaking out his place. <laughs> yeah. Until he until it proves to be lucrative, until it proves mm-hmm. to be and then he's all in. So yeah. I just realized you can't trust George as far as you can freaking throw him because Not at all. he is loyal no. to no one except himself. And the network. Oh yeah. yeah right. Yeah, that big and, huge fuck the network, really. Fuck the network, right? Yeah. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, like, you know, we have Gordon. Gordon, um, I, I, from what I was taking, is like, you know, he wants to protect the integrity of his craft, of his show. He doesn't 
want to sell himself out and hawk this this diddy do diaper cream. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I'm like, well, you know, good for you. You know, he's willing to not like, you know, sell himself out just to get a brand new set. And, um, you know, just a few of the lines, like I, I really liked how Midge just said, you know, the day do di- the diaper cream, the cute jar smells good. It gave her a rash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then it went a transition into where um, Midge, you know, like threw in her little bit of comedy about how like in him monologue that he should wear a diaper and George gave her that. That death look. stare Ooh. Mm-hmm. and you know but i george a little scary yeah you don't you don't want to make enemies with this man <laughs> he's he's he is very scary so when they went into his office i looked at some of the little easter eggs that are on his walls he had a couple golden globes i looked up who david ben gurion is he was yeah. the prime he was the national founder of the state of israel and he was the first prime minister of israel but apparently he's deeply funny um, <laughs> yeah. there was, I don't know if you saw any others. I saw Elizabeth Taylor and Marlon Brando yep. in some of yep. those pictures. Um, he's had broadcasting certificates. Um, you know, he's a really, he's an established, you know, worked really hard for his whole life. And now his opinion and expertise is not appreciated anymore mm-hmm. at this office. Um, and I, I agree with you. I think he's taking advantage of the fact that Midge could help him kind of weasel in to get this, uh, you know, to get the deal with this, uh, this particular group of. Uh, well, yeah, he, 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 he does. Hi- he does take. I mean, it was very smart of Midge and ballsy of her to pitch the idea to George to just go in that office. She sees an oh, opportunity yeah. mm-hmm. and she goes after it. And I love Midge for that. I do. Yeah. I mean, she it's pretty asks brilliant for what she for wants. Both of them. Like it's well until. We actually get on the boat mm-hmm. but it's pretty much a win-win because she i mean she's a mother mm-hmm. maybe not the most maternal mother but she brings a different perspective in i will say i did love their little exchange as she's leaving his office when she finally <laughs> like convinces him and he mm-hmm. says something about like asking if her rash cleared up, and then he says, "Now get out." And she goes, "What are you gonna wear?" Yeah, it goes out. <laughs> it was like the way Rachel Brosnahan, like yes, I don't know her inflections and the way she delivers these lines. Like they just they're so simple, but she just makes it jump off the page, and it makes me so happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, every time we see George, I feel like he's a different character. We get mm-hmm. a totally different color. I just don't know what to make of George anymore. And I mean, I do after this episode, asshole. Mm-hmm. That's what I make of him, mm-hmm. you know? And like oh, yeah. I said, can't can't trust him. Can't trust anything he says. He's honest to no one. He, he's got these death stares. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's very serious. He's very intense. Yeah. Uh, which, but I can understand it because working for Gordon Ford, no one is happy. <laughs> you know, look at Mike. <laughs> Poor Mike. Oh, he Mike. Could, Mike he, would otherwise be a great, happy person, and, but working for Gordon Ford has, like, <laughs> taken the life out of this guy, you know? Maybe it's George who's taken the life out of it, because, you know... Oh, yeah. Or maybe this yeah. is his new purpose in life, is seeing George fall. I mean, I think it's working in the... It's it's the biz, you know? Mm-hmm. I, can, I can speak for it. It is a little soul-sucking. Yeah. yeah. That it makes jades, sense. It jades you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> so the, before we go off of this whole thing, I got to just say, I had some favorite lines <laughs> in the office, especially with Gordon when they're talking about the Ed Gein thing. Uh, I can't help but hearken back to our radio days, George, when you got sponsored, when you got us sponsored by that weed killer. And George, oh God, not not the weed killer that ended up killing not weeds, but a dozen senior citizens. I read about it. <laughs> 14. I read about it. That's oh, what Marge, Marge says. That beats Ed Gein. <laughs> Maybe they were using it wrong. A lot of empty houses at bingo that week. It oh just, it went right past me the first time. And then mm-hmm. the second time I'm like, that is wildly funny. Just the way it's delivered. And then uh, when when uh, Gordon says to George, you didn't think to call George? We share a wall, huh? You didn't want to do your special knock? <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. God. Anything else about that scene or those group of scenes? No, I, I mean- don't. Yeah, go ahead, I'll just Tara. say, like, Ed Gein is my second favorite serial killer with the name Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Edmund Kemp- Kempmer is my favorite. And I say favorite, and I mean, like, the most fascinating. But I was 
not expecting any sort of serial killer reference in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So I enjoyed that probably a little more than I should have in this scene. Yep. Yep. I think a lot of it had to do with Marge, Marge's delivery of that line. And oh, Gordon, yeah. Gordon uh, <laughs> the guy who, pl- oh, I always forget his name, Reed, Reed Scott, Scott, just doing an excellent job. He is doing an excellent job at making me just hate this guy. Mm-hmm. I am not about. I am not about Gordon. I am not. Uh, Cara, I, can't, I cannot like, like him. Like that little. Heart I was bubbles. gonna say he like, 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 like this episode. I am almost like one hundred percent there towards being a fan of Gordon. Yeah. Like, oh my god! I'm almost know. there. I like him a little bit better. Oh, at I least by not. the end. <laughs> like it might be a Reed Scott thing. Like he is just so damn charming, and he toes that line of like asshole. Like, where it's offensive to where it's mm-hmm. like, damn it, you son of a bitch. Like, this is really attractive. So, or, <laughs> no, that's just me. But I think, I think he just does a really good job. Maybe that's intentional. I hope. I, I'm sure it is. Because I think we're supposed to be a little bit confused about Gordon. Especially I think so, after too. the end. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. For me, I often get confused about how I feel about, char- about female characters. With guys, I'm usually really one way or the other. Especially with, mm-hmm. like, Joel, for example. I, until <sighs> season Joel. five, I hated Joel yep. with such a fiery passion. And I, if you would ask me, would I, would I ever change that opinion? I'd be like, unwavering, sir. Mm-hmm. No. I, that is an, it is set in stone, that opinion. This, this season, we'll get there. We're almost there <sighs> yeah, with yeah. how I, my, my feelings for Joel are changing. And yep. I'm like, who am I? But, I'm sure uh, we will have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But as far as the Gordon character goes, I can't like him. I just can't. And I think it's not that the actor isn't doing a great job. He is. He's doing a great job at playing just a He's a jerk. If he's there kind is of one insufferable. Word, he's a cad. In, thank you. Yes, a cad. A cad. He's insufferable. Yeah. He's a rake. He's all the words. I, I have written down if there's one word that I he's could use to describe Gordon. <laughs> he's guest oh. on. It is incorrigible. This man is incorrigible. Oh my gosh. Because he's saying. Gaston is like one of the worst things you can call a man. <laughs> I feel like he's a monster. He's a monster. Ugh. He's the real beast, right? But um, oh, yeah. no, but, but Gordon, I just want to know, how did you become so successful if you are thinking that advertising a diaper cream will, you, you're trying to make me look like an idiot in front of all these people? I'm not doing that. I'm like, how, you call yourself a comedian, sir? Like, how yeah. did you get to be this successful? with? Because, okay, for example, for me, one of my first big voiceover jobs was for a feminine product company, you know, a, a tampon company. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was so stoked to get that that ad. I don't I, I have no shame about, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to advertise advertisements, if there's someone that wants to work with you and pay you, they're beating out who was it, Chevy? Yeah. They outbid Chevy. This is a lot of money happening with this dippity do or diddy do diaper, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got a funny name, dude, but uh you can make it funny. Uh yeah. you're a comedian. Earth to Gordon Ford. Did you not know you're a comedian? I mean, I was very confused. Is he I, do so. <laughs> I do still see him as kind of, I mean, we were what? We're solidly in 1961 now. Mm-hmm. And I still, I mean, there's this hesitance when it comes to talking about, I don't know, like women's products or childhood products mm-hmm. on his late night show. But and I think we're true. just at the beginning of, you know, kind of the Mad Men era in advertising where people start to wake up a little bit, especially when it's like, hey, women are the ones making the decision about what household products you're carrying. And he's obviously just like taking a little while to open up to it. His wife did encourage him to get a woman's perspective in the writer's room. So maybe he's just taking like really painful baby steps. It's true. I have to, I do have to say, I mean, yeah, it's shocking to me that he is, he was able to stay married. Although their marriage is, of convenience this is not a real marriage i'm pretty sure we're we're aware of that but i am surprised that he has remained married to her i i feel like good for him Mm -hmm, because he is he says it several times heady this heady that oh i'm going to do these things for heady i'm listening to heady the reason he hires midge in the first place right is because heady wants more of a women's perspective to be showcased on the show so he does involve her in his decision making which I guess, okay, it's points true. to Gordon. I'll give him the points. <laughs> I'll give him that. I hadn't considered that really a whole lot, but you're right. 
Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm still stuck on you guys comparing him to Gaston. <laughs> like that makes me so sad. <laughs> He's just so macho, obnoxious. Oh, we'll get there. He is. Yes. And yeah. you may be learning that I have a type. And yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. you and, Fine. You and yeah. Midge. <laughs> Except for Joel. Joel is, yeah. No, you would definitely went with Dr. Oh. Ben. Oh, God. I wish you would have married him. I loved him so much. I know. Yeah. He's the best. And he was Anyway, so okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all miss Stay him. Stay on track. <laughs> all right. So next scene. Next scene. Here we go, guys. We're getting, we got Rose, Shirley, and Midge getting ready for Zelda's wedding. Yay! Yes. Ah! Okay. I take will it away. say that whole scene was an absolute treat to an watch. An absolute treat. Yes. These four fabulous women act with each other. And it was one of those where I watched it, I think maybe five times total. I watched the episode twice all the way through, but I just kept going back and watching this scene because I enjoyed it so much. And I will say I was surprised that Zelda was getting married that quickly. I was not expecting to see it that fast but two months i feel like you know marriages <laughs> yeah. marriages at that stage in your life it's when you true. know you know what are you waiting for <laughs> that's Go very true dive in you know and assuming she was well aware that marrying yanush meant that she would no longer be working i could see why she would want to hurry up <laughs> and start her life mm-hmm. quote unquote but just oh, everything about this scene, I loved the fact that one, Rose and Abe were hosting it in their home. And yes, like they do refer to seeing Zelda as family, but I think it does mean a lot that they opened up the home to them and that and Rose was offering those earrings. The second Zelda. time, second time yes. we're getting Rose jewelry. I'm just saying it's. I I'm, thought I'm, of you. Make notes during guys. that scene. I was just like, oh, I hope nothing gets stolen. I hope we're wrong about that. I have but, my suspicions. I know, and I don't think that was obviously another coincidence or a throwaway. But mm. I did like the way it was delivered, where <laughs> Zelda was just like, you know, you don't have to do this, Mrs. Wiseman, and Rose is like, of course I do. Your earlobes look positively naked. It's obscene. <laughs> <laughs> such a great yes. rose moment and golden. i love that zelda is so appreciative you let me have my special day here in this house with all my yes. memories and cleaning products <laughs> oh that was so good and that when that so i heard that line um how do you say how did we decide we say her name matilda Z- uh zittigis zittigis mm-hmm. i'm just gonna i think so matilda yeah. because she's wonderful but i do think that Zelda is uh, so underrated and her comedic timing is oh man just spot on and that exchange was one of my favorites um and then obviously Midge coming in and going through Rose and Abe's wedding album and Mm -hmm. saying you know mama you look so pretty and papa looks so scared and she's like (laughs) he does that sounds about spot on and then obviously the discussion about sex and how women are more pre- prepared than men and it That's was my so, Jolie. yep okay so in can character for shirley yes can i do it yeah go for it Please. when midge is saying well joel was ready and then my favorite moment rose Am I invisible? Silent? Do words come out of my mouth and disappear into the ether? Oh, I'm just saying gosh. that the boat landed in Normandy and he stormed the beach. That's my Jolie. And Miriam, <laughs> this is nightclub talk. I am not listening to this. Twice. Oh my God. And oh, Zelda, <laughs> plus you two had been doing it in your bedroom for two years prior. Bam, Zelda. What yeah. the? And then ah! Mitch was like, but I just, you look so pretty. Oh, that was I so, you look so Yeah. So and that Rose was another... is just like, dying inside rose is like losing oh, yeah. her shit the facial expressions of all of them throughout yes. this scene like the you guys. small like in fact it was just it was so perfect and that's why i kept watching it i was like yeah. every single time i would focus on a different one mm-hmm. and it was just everything was so intentional and well executed but oh zelda throwing midge under the bus <laughs> but I love I love that we've come so far in their dynamic and everything where, you know, mm-hmm. when we first first met Midge at the beginning, 
we <laughs> things were like swept under the rug and you know oh it's not proper to talk about these things and rose was so much more closed minded and now midge is just like talking about sex to her mm-hmm. mom and yep. rose is kind of forced to take it and she's you know, I guess not thrilled with it, but she's taking it, you know, and we've just come so far, you know, and we've all gotten so close. And I just, I love the growth. And yeah, this scene, it's definitely, I think, in my top five favorite scenes of the entire, every season of this show as a whole. That's 100%. my Jolie is uh-huh. one yes. of my favorite lines throughout the show. Caroline but- Aaron was a standout in this episode for me. She Caroline was. Aaron, mm-hmm. she is making me really see Shirley and appreciate Shirley in ways that I never have before. I have never loved Shirley more than especially this scene in particular with Caroline Aaron. She has perfected making such an unrealistic over-the-top role so real and so backed up as a character actor. In her mind, she knows exactly who Shirley is. And she's even though it's not my kind of humor, it's not my brand of humor that I that tickles my funny bone, I'm laughing. I am so in love with her as an artist, as an actor. Very few people could pull off Shirley and make her, make me not, oh God, not groan she's and not roll my eyes. She's She's adorable. She's, she's fucking endearing. adorable. She's endearing. She's, um... Like I, I know, I know her. Oh yeah, like, you know, you feel like you know yeah. her. She's like either like you're one of your relatives or, but yeah, she's she's so like human. <laughs> and the, the way she just had that cigarette hanging out of her mouth and and fixing, uh, you know, Zelda's dress, and she's just in it, man. Caroline Aaron, yeah, bravo. I feel like she's got the MVP award of this entire episode for me. She mm-hmm. stood out. Yeah, That's true. I agree. It was hard to pick a favorite, obviously, then transitioning into the actual wedding ceremony Mm -hmm. in the apartment. Like, it was so hard to hone in on. Want to talk about, yeah, another another top scene. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Of the whole series. I mean, oh. Obviously, like, it's only fitting, I guess, that Zelda and Janusz get married in that apartment. It makes sense. And what were they in the dining room? They had kind of... Made a little makeshift aisle in. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And as Zelda and Yannish are, you know, reading out their vows to each other, it was just like the sweetest thing ever, as we talked about earlier in the episode. But as soon as Yannish said, what what did he say? It was about, you know, you'll start enjoying your life without burden. And I was Mm -hmm. just like, oh my gosh, she's not going to work there anymore. And as you see, the realization hit Rose <laughs> and Abe. Uh-huh. They look like somebody just ran over their puppy. I was just like, and oh, before no. that, they were holding each other. They were clutching mm, each other. Like, and this Aww. was, this was um a very close second for me for most marvelous moment when oh, yeah. Rose. Do you remember the day Zelda arrived at our door? Yes! Abe? And Abe just goes, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm first of all happy to find out why she arrived yes. on that door. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly what I was about to say. I Tell was just me, like, I- is she casing? The, like, is she casing the apartment? Is that all intentional? I, my brain went <laughs> wild. I want the Zelda origin story. Yes, right now. But yeah. yes, they go. Tony like- Shalhoub's delivery of like wistfully saying no was. Yes outstanding (laughs) and that's one of those things like i always wonder when there's just like this brilliant (laughs) one-liner if there's any sort of direction from amy sherman palladino or you know in the script at all how he's supposed to play that or if that is all oh no oh no tony shalhoub that's a a trust in the amazing tony shalhoub and Marin hinkle right there (sighs) i just the talent that it takes it makes me realize that i was a terrible actor when i was acting in <laughs> high school because i that would never cross my mind and it just makes me appreciate i guess the craft so much more and i can't say that about that many television series this show mm-hmm. every single actor i just like want to nerd out over mm-hmm. and it's like the yeah. way you were talking about how caroline aaron just the way that she says that's my jolie Yes. <laughs> it, it melts my heart, truly, I know. And that, that moment, I 
it melted me where when Abe and Rose are sitting there like watching Zelda like they're looking at their own daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's our little Zelda getting married and they're so they're genuinely happy for her until oh, yeah. their whole faces just fall mm-hmm. and you the can just see the transition into abject yeah. panic. Um, <laughs> I wonder if we yeah, can make do. I think if we we can make a, like a slow transition video to watch their facial expressions so oh, we go yeah. from in like, slow mo, yeah, <laughs> and then of course Midge is kind of in the background, like sh- trying to tell them to calm down. She's like, "Knock it off!" Like this is Zelda's wedding. Until they point out that this is going to leave her without childcare, mm-hmm. and then she's just like, "Wait a second. And then she <laughs> and Joel start to have their own little panic session over to the side. So rude. <laughs> she's like, "Guys, like Zelda is getting married here," and. The best, I don't, there were just so many good lines, but Kevin Pollock delivering the line, pipe down all of you, like you're making Jews look loud and obnoxious. That yeah, left, I love When Moish and Shirley are the voices oh, of reason and are exactly. the only like respectful <laughs> members of this, you know, wedding party, it tells you a lot. <laughs> And, you know, you guys, say what you will about Shirley and Moish. I know that they are not everyone's favorite. They're not everyone's cup of tea. I've seen on, like, you know, the Reddit threads Mm -hmm. and everything. People are like, oh, every time they're on screen, I just don't think it's funny and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I'm totally opposite opinion at this point. I really, I didn't always used to love Shirley and Moish, but now I really love them. Um, And say what you will about them, but they are loving parents, okay? Mm -hmm. What they did when it came to May, getting her out of... When they thought she was like trapped oh, in China, yeah. they like went to work, man. They are, they're so, and they're so concerned about Zelda and Yanu. She's like, I should have given him a suit. Oh God. And she's <laughs> like, we've done all we can. We have to let it go. But they're so, they really genuinely care. They're such good loving parents. Really? And, and I and think Shirley's like got her them. head up Zelda's dress. and <laughs> Oh, that was good. But I mean, they really are there. It seems like most of the time for comedic relief and i think that even kevin pollock has talked about that in interviews that that's essentially you know the purpose of their characters and they remind me of you know people who are fans of amy sherman palladino's other works like kind of babette and murray and Gilmore girls Mm -hmm. and because they're a little extreme and a little outrageous and maybe not you know the most realistic characters but i think it makes all the difference when you have actors that portray them so convincingly and just like yeah. Kevin Pollack almost stole that scene for me with that one mm-hmm. delivery uh-huh. <laughs> that uh-huh. line. And his so crying. It just, oh, <laughs> yes. It was it was so good. He was he and was it, talking for us in that up that like, moment. <laughs> oh yeah. It yeah. Oh, I just loved the whole thing. Agreed. Midge's dress was gorgeous. Oh yes. Um, and then, uh, then I just also want to mention Abe playing Chopin in the beginning. And oh, my had, gosh. He okay. had to finish because he was telling a story. Come on, come on, come on, Jane. <laughs> just dying for it. This is, there's one thing I had to I have to quote from this scene. It's Chopin, people. It's one of his most famous works. It tells a story. You don't just stop. Mid- <laughs> Chopin will forgive you, Papa. Wrap it up. And then he plays dun 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 mm-hmm. Happy <laughs> Abe. Oh, Sassy Abe. Abe is one of my favorites. <laughs> oh. Okay, before we wrap up with our talk of the whole Zelda getting married thing, I just have to say Zelda looks like a picture, like a dream in this wedding dress. I, as soon as I saw it, I died. I Gorgeous. was so thrilled at this look. The got the the cotton candy. <laughs> Shirley was, you know, having a, oh, a yeah. time of it. She's like, if you want to wear cotton candy, fine, but <laughs> you gotta <laughs> be careful or you're gonna be walking down there naked. It was so funny. But I she looked the color. so gorgeous. It was beautiful. I know, and the flowers, like I want to wear that dress on my I'll probably I don't know if I'm the marrying kind, but if I if I ever am, <laughs> I want it. Even least if the you headdress. don't get married, you can have like some sort of party oh, yeah. or ceremony. If you go to a midsummer yeah. party, maybe I you just, can wear something like I, that. Yeah, right. I, I was just like, want what kind of midsummer party? <laughs> <laughs> I just want this to be like my next Halloween costume. I don't know. I want to be Zelda for Halloween. That'd be fun. Zelda at her wedding. But okay. So let's go into this whole Midge and Joel on the fire escape. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, okay, we get confirmation in this scene that it's been a few months since the last episode and no mention of consequences for Midge, you know, the Frank and Nikki thing. Uh, we just get confirmed that Susie is withholding a lot of information from Midge. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Midge Midge's 
sure, she's certain that the dues, the debt has been paid. They are square. It was a one-time thing, she says. This is going to be, you know, I think this might be the thing that eventually breaks up their friendship is like Susie's lack of communication to Midge. Because yes. if there's one thing that they, the two of them had going for them with their whole friendship, romance, womance, uh, is that they were always honest with each other, that mm -hmm. they were equals, you know, that they were always letting each other know how they felt about everything. If Midge was having a problem, she would tell Susie and vice versa. But Susie is, I feel, I don't know if this is her being a good manager or a not good manager. Like, remember when she was debating whether to tell, to run up and tell Midge, Gordon Ford's in the audience. Don't mess up on your, like, don't say tittens. Don't say tittens. <laughs> and she's yeah. like, she's like, shit, fuck cock. I don't know what to do. You know, she yeah. was like, think like Midge. Think like Midge. Fuck, I don't know what to do. So it's like, to tell Midge or to not tell Midge, what is the best option? Who knows? Um, Susie is going with not, not to tell. Ugh. I don't know. I, I just feel like this will be the thing. Well, especially if this also leads to the imprisonment of Joel. Right. If if yeah. what we've been speculating ends up being true and part of him taking the fall protects both Susie and Midge, I could see Midge holding a grudge about that. For right. Sure. So And also she should tell her it's the mob. Midge has family and children. Yeah. I feel like that's important. And she's already like blown it with Midge's money. At one time, and Midge isn't aware of that. And right, if yeah. Frank and Nikki are expecting 30% of, you know, whatever Midge brings in or Susie mm -hmm. brings in, mm -hmm. like, that's mm -hmm. that's a little much. Yeah, and if Joel only knew about that little detail, oh, yeah. Susie's Gosh. ass would be grass, okay? That's because Joel true. knows about the money situation from before. So I feel that that's mm -hmm. a big, that's a, Joel that's a big factor. Joel saves Susie's ass. Yeah. Yeah. And and like, it's a big it's a big thing that's weighing on Joel's uh, mind, I think, is that he is aware that Susie is in it real deep. And mm -hmm. if like he says, if Susie's in bed with these guys, you're in bed with these guys. And Midge is convinced that everything's fine. Um, th so they're smoking and they're toasting, you know, to our kids figuring out how to raise themselves. And I'm like, yikes. <laughs> yeah, because like, obviously, the logical conclusion is not that they would